All right, welcome back. So if we break down the topics we've covered into the main sort of core central ideas to JavaScript, we had variables, then we had conditionals, then we did data structures, arrays and objects. Now we have another really key piece to any programming language, which is looping. How do we repeat code? And it's not just about repeating console.log hello 10 times. There's so many different scenarios where we need logic to run multiple times, where we need a game loop to continue to loop and run code over and over and over until game over is true, until a user wins. We're going to see a bunch of different types of loops, different ways of repeating functionality or repeating logic in our scripts. So we have a couple main goals here. There are different types of loops. We're going to talk about four main loops. First of all, the for loop. We want to be able to write for loops, understand the syntax, do the same thing with while loops, a different type of a loop. Along the way, we'll talk about infinite loops, a very non-desirable outcome from a loop, how they arise, how to avoid them, that sort of thing. And then we'll shift our focus to data structures with loops. So how do we loop over an array or an object? How do we do something once per every item in an array or every value in an object? Those are really, really common use cases as well. So these loops that we're going to write are all about doing things repeatedly taking some block of code and running it over and over and over. And it's not always the same outcome every single time. It could be like if we were printing hello 10 times. We're always console.logging hello. We would use a loop just to shorten up our code. Instead of having to write 10 console.logs, we can write one and have it run 10 times. But then other times, the outcomes or the iterations of the loop are different. Like if we were going to sum every number in an array, we would need to loop or iterate once for each item in the array and add them into a total or a sum variable. So each time the number we're adding in is different. So it's not just console.logging hello 10 times, we're still changing what's happening each time through the loop. So there are multiple loop types, for and while, I mentioned those already. We'll also see two more, the for of loop and the for in loop. And I'll wrap up with this intro video with a quick example or two examples of where loops are used all over the place on the web, on the web, on websites. Here is one of my favorite subreddits, artisan videos. It's a very relaxing, non-stressful, beautiful subreddit I come to when I'm in, in a bad mood. Um, it's just videos of people who are really talented at their work, woodworkers, carvers, calligraphers. Anyway, if you saw the underlying data structure behind each post here, all the data we see on the page, there's an array of posts. And each post looks something like this. This is a very simplified version, but we have an array of posts. Each post is an object, and each post has a title, a link, a username of the person who submitted it. There's also the number of upvotes. There's all the comment information, the date it was posted, if it's been gilded or not. So all of that information is contained in one object for each post, and then all of those objects are combined into one large array. There is a loop behind the scenes that is going to iterate over every single post in that array and display it on this web page. Make some HTML content for it. Put an image there, put the title here, put the upvotes here. That is all done with a loop. None of it is hard coded. So if there were 10 items to display, that loop would run 10 times. If there were 1,000 posts in that array, it would run 1,000 times. So that's one type of loop where you're iterating over something, you're doing something a set number of times. This is another type of loop where we have a game loop. If you've never seen this game, it's called 2048. I wasted way too much of my high school and college classes playing this game in the back. It's really simple. It doesn't really matter how it works, but you combine powers of two together and they form a new number. So if I combine two and two, I get four, four and four, I get eight, eight and eight, I get 16. Anyways. I can keep playing this game. There's logic that runs every time I hit one of these arrow keys. You can't see that I'm doing it, but you might be able to hear it. Every time I hit an arrow key, something happens on the page. But there's going to be a point where I can't move anymore. And at that point, the main loop of the game is over. So the, the logic of this loop is something like, if there are still playable moves, if the, the board is not completely jammed up and locked, then let the user keep playing and see what happens listen for an event for a key press and you can see I just lost so at this point that logic is done that loop had been going and in my case I probably had a couple hundred turns a couple hundred arrow presses 
but it's possible you could have a much, much longer game or even a quicker game. I don't know though. I was just hitting it randomly. It's probably a pretty bad strategy, but I'm sure you could lose the game quicker. So the point here is that we're not looping a set number of times. We're not repeating some code 20 times every single time. Instead, it's dynamic and it's a loop that just continues to run some logic until a condition is met. So we'll see how to do both of these types of loops. We're going to start with the for loop, which is up next.